Hello, I am the Mighty Pez. In this video, I will be discussing hysteresis, what it is and what problem it solves as it relates to integrated circuits. Additionally, I will be demonstrating its effect using two different IC inverters. So please, join me. In this video, we will discuss hysteresis and how it applies to digital electronics. Additionally, we will demonstrate circuit functions without and with hysteresis. Hysteresis is a behavior affecting the state transition of a system where not only the input value, but also the history of the input changes affect the output state. Simply put, logic with hysteresis have separate thresholds for the on and off state changes. To illustrate, in order to prevent the compressor from quickly fluctuating on and off and putting undue stress on the equipment, an air conditioner set to 72 degrees won't cycle between the two states immediately at the trigger threshold. Typically, the AC will have a several degree spread between the cooling and idle states. For example, the cooling state ends as the temp drops below 70, but does not trigger again until the temperature exceeds 73 degrees. In a digital circuit, hysteresis is used to reduce output noise in a circuit caused by fluctuations in the input. This diagram shows the hysteresis loop for a Schmidt trigger, which is used to add hysteresis to a circuit. The x-axis represents our input voltage, and the y-axis represents the output state. As described, this circuit has two thresholds instead of one. Here, VT plus is the positive going threshold triggered when voltage is rising, whereas VT minus is the negative going threshold triggered when voltage is decreasing. With separate thresholds, the input is less likely to be able to trigger output oscillation as it cannot hover over both triggers. For comparison, this diagram shows the function of a standard logic gate without hysteresis. Note that there is only a single threshold for both state changes somewhere between the minimum high-level input voltage and the maximum low-level input voltage, both of which are documented in the data sheet for the specific IC, we will find the trigger threshold. In this circuit, any fluctuation around the single trigger point due to noise or slow change in the input could lead to fluctuations in output. Imagine in the AC example how easily temperatures hovering around the trigger point would lead to AC stopping and starting often. From the data sheet for our standard circuit, the transition threshold between the high level minimum and the low level maximum input will be found between 2 volts and 0.8 volts. For our estimate, we will choose the midpoint at around 1.4 volts for the expected transition to occur. From here on, we will shift from a general discussion of logic gates to actual ICs. Our demonstration will compare a standard inverter to a Schmidt trigger inverter. Our two example ICs will be the 74HCT04 hex inverter and the 74HCT14 Schmidt trigger hex inverter. Notice in the data sheet for an inverter IC with a Schmidt trigger that the logic symbol is a slightly modified standard NOT gate. Note the hysteresis curve as well as the inversion bubble. The diagram for the Schmidt trigger inverter is nearly the same as the diagram for the Schmidt trigger, as previously shown, but with the logic 0 and 1 states on the y-axis flipped. Prior to our demonstration, we will estimate the trigger points that we expect. For the standard inverter, we've already taken a midpoint of 1.4 volts. For the Schmidt inverter's two thresholds, we leverage the data sheet and will note key characteristics. First note that data is provided for two different reference voltages, 4.5 and 5.5 volts. We will use this fact to help us interpolate an expected value at our test input voltage, which I've already measured to be 5.14 volts. For both positive and negative going thresholds, we will use the values provided for the typical trigger points to calculate our estimate. 
using the range of 1.5 volt and 1.7 volt for the positive going threshold and 0.9 and 1 volt for the negative going threshold. First we are going to create our extrapolation value. Calculating the percentage of measured voltages between the two provided voltages in our data sheet. Then using that value, we will calculate our expected VT plus as being 64% of the distance between the values provided in the data sheet. And doing the same for VT minus provides us with our values of 1.63 for VT plus and 0.96 volts for VT minus. We will note on our diagram the values that we expect to measure during testing. VT plus at approximately 1.63 volt and VT minus to occur at approximately 0.96 volt. To demonstrate integrated circuits, first without and then with hysteresis, we will be using this simple circuit which will allow us to manually adjust the input voltage so that we can see at what point triggering occurs. As both the 74HCT04 inverter and the 74HCT14 Schmidt trigger inverter both use the same pin configuration, we will simply need to swap between the two ICs for testing. The components of the circuit are the USB-C C port wired to provide power and ground to the breadboard, a potentiometer connected to 5 volt power and ground with the middle leg providing an adjustable output voltage allowing us to manually determine the trigger thresholds. We'll attach our multimeter to the ground and provided output from the potentiometer which will allow us to measure the input voltage provided to the inverter. This circuit will be used for both ICs and we have all five unused pins tied to ground. This is standard practice which will prevent unexpected results. The input pin, pin 1, will receive the output from the potentiometer and the output pin, pin 2, will be tied to a green LED which is then connected to ground through a 330 ohm resistor. This will allow us to visually see when high to low and low to high thresholds are triggered. So with our test circuit, you can see that we have our multimeter hooked up to the output of the potentiometer, which is currently turned down as far as it can go to zero. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply power, and immediately you'll notice that the LED comes on. Again, this is an inverter, so the low logic input immediately results in a high logic output. What we're going to do is start adjusting the potentiometer to raise the voltage until we see the inverter go to a low state. At that point we will have located the threshold voltage. Based on our calculations we expect the threshold to be 1.4 volts. So we're slowly raising it and there we see it cut off. So a little over 1.5 volts, which is pretty close to the expected 1.4 volts. Again, the range could have been anywhere from 2 volts to 0.8 volts, and we just expected the cutoff to be somewhere in the middle, which would have been 1.4. So there you go. As we adjust up and down, you can see we immediately trigger the inverter off, low state, and then high state. So somewhere around one and a half volts where the threshold for both low to high and high to low states. So now what we're going to do is replace the standard inverter with the Schmidt inverter. This is the 74HCT14, which has, of course, the same pinout as the standard inverter, but includes a Schmidt trigger. Again, we'll apply power. As 
set the input voltage as close to zero, and you'll notice again that it's in a high state. So now what we expect to see is the high to low trigger and the low to high trigger will be at different voltages. So let me go ahead again and adjust this until it triggers the high to low. We expect this to be approximately 1.63 volts. There we go. 1.68 volts approximately. Now what we'll notice is we lower the voltage, it won't immediately trigger low to high again. We are going to expect the transition around 0.96 volts. So we'll start reducing voltage. And there you go, somewhere around 0.93 volts, we got the expected low to high trigger. So what that has shown us is that the inverter with the Schmidt trigger has completely separate triggering voltages for high to low and low to high. Again, we saw that in the earlier diagram, and we were pretty close to expected voltages. To help demonstrate the issue of noise on a standard logic gate without hysteresis, we are going to use the oscilloscope and attach probe 1, the red probe, to the output of the potentiometer so that we can measure the input voltage. We will attach probe 2, the yellow probe, to the output of the standard inverter. And apply power. So as we adjust the input voltage near the transition state, we'll be able to see the effective noise, which without some form of mitigation could lead to unexpected results in our circuit. We can definitely see the noise on the oscilloscope from the circuit output as we approach the trigger threshold. The last thing we're going to do is to hook up a signal generator to the inverter so that we can visualize the difference in the triggering mechanism between the two circuits. First, we'll disconnect the potentiometer from the input and connect a slow 2 Hz sine wave as input to the inverter. So, I'm going to hook up the leads for our signal generator. to the input. Then we're going to go ahead and hook up the leads from our oscilloscope. First, the red probe. We're going to hook it up to the input signal. And then our yellow probe. We will hook up to the output. Now we're going to apply power to our circuit. Currently we are not yet sending it a signal, so you can see we're solid high. We're going to go ahead. And we're going to feed it a very slow 2 hertz sine wave. And we'll now enable the signal generator. Okay, we are now feeding it a 2 hertz signal. On our oscilloscope, what we can see is that there is noise on the rising edge. This is what we're trying to prevent. Um, again, we currently have the non-Schmidt trigger, so there's no hysteresis on this circuit. There's an example of noise showing up right there. Also, on the XY graph, 
you can see that there is very little overlap as the trigger from high to low and low to high are at the same voltage level. You can see this on the oscilloscope where we are triggering both on the rising edge and the falling edge at the same level. So let's go ahead and stop this input. Cut power to the circuit. Now we're going to go ahead and replace the standard inverter with the Schmidt trigger inverter. Once again, we will apply power to the circuit. Currently, we have no signal coming in, so it is again high. We will set up the two hertz sine wave. You're now feeding a signal to the circuit. So now what we see on the oscilloscope, as we have previously discussed, is our trigger points are at two different levels based on rising or falling edge. Here on the rising edge, it triggers at a lower voltage, while on the falling edge, it triggers at a higher voltage. And again, because this is an inverter, it's actually the opposite of what we saw in the first diagram. But it is what we expect. Also up here, you can see the same effect, that there is now an overlap. As the voltage is going high, it triggers at a higher level than when the voltage is coming back down from 5 volts. It triggers to go back high again at a lower level. Also notice that the output is a clean square wave. Note that the trigger on the rising and falling edges are different. This too is highlighted by the XY display in the upper left and shows the overlapping input voltage for rising and falling input edges. Hysteresis is commonly used in digital logic to solve noise related issues such as keyboard and switch debouncing or other areas where changes in the input value may not be smooth around the trigger threshold. Other examples of noisy data can be found where inputs are environmental, such as temperature changes. The hysteresis property can also be found in a multitude of other disciplines, such as biology, economics, physics, chemistry, and engineering. The goal of this video was to describe and demonstrate hysteresis using digital logic circuits and explain possible use cases and benefits. Besides the inverter ICs that were demonstrated, hysteresis as implemented by a Schmidt trigger can also be implemented as an option in other basic logic gates, including AND, OR, NAND, NOR, and exclusive OR ICs. I hope this video was enjoyable and informative, and I thank you for watching.